what is the greatest evidence that the Bible is dependable? What it's mm -hmm. done for me, what it's done for so many people. And you may not even know why. You can't always even explain why the Bible transforms people. Jesus said the words I speak, they're spirit, they're life. And it's hard to explain spiritual things, but there's something about it. It's, it's living. For years, I understand people used aspirin, which comes from the bark of a tree. And they knew it relieved pain, and they didn't know why. Now we know why, because of microscopes and, and chemistry. But they used it for years before they even knew why. And it worked. And so I think that's the greatest evidence for why we can trust the Bible. Um, some people maybe think the Bible has been changed over time, and so how do you know it's really what it started out to be? Mm -hmm. Got any thoughts on that? Well, let's begin with a little breakdown of what the Bible is. You've got 66 books bound together to form one book. 22 of the books of the Bible are largely historical. 21 are mostly prophetic. And then there's another 21 books that are written in the form of letters. And then we have two of the books of the Bible that are mostly poetic. And even though the Bible was written by more than 36 authors over a period of 1,600 years, one of the evidences of the accuracy of the scripture is how that all of these authors over such a long period of time are all saying the same thing. That in itself is evidence for the trustworthiness of the Bible. You know, on top of that, not only are there all these different authors, the background of the authors, they come from hermits, Shepherds, farmers, kings, priests. I mean, it is all across the spectrum of their backgrounds. And yet, in spite of that, vastly different educational backgrounds and social backgrounds, they all have, there's a uniformity in the message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not only does the Bible have evidence for its trustworthiness by the authors that have contributed to it, but also the claim that the Bible makes. Now, the Bible makes a remarkable claim. It claims to be indestructible. Matter of fact, the Bible claims to be as indestructible as God himself. So if we look in history to see if people have tried to destroy the Bible, how successful were they? If they couldn't destroy the Bible, that would add evidence to what the Bible is saying. Now, if we look back in history, beginning way back in 303 AD, we find the Roman emperor Diocletian uh, having a vicious campaign against the Bible, trying to destroy the Bible, he actually made a decree that any person found with a Bible or the scriptures would be put to death. After waging this war against the Bible for a number of years, he finally set up a column with the inscription that the name of Christians has been extinguished. But despite his efforts, we know today that the Bible has only grown in its influence and in its power, in its popularity. And then throughout the Dark Ages, people have tried to destroy the Bible. Uh, international communism has tried to destroy the Bible. The French Revolution tried to destroy the Bible. But all attempts have failed. That testifies to the trustworthiness of God's Word. It's like trying to get rid of your grass by mowing it. It just comes up thicker. <laughs> right? Or like shaving. <laughs> you start shaving, it just comes out thicker. Yeah. But uh, So the Bible, you can't get rid of it like that by cutting it down. I want to give out some scriptures that bear this out. We have a couple microphones. Ray has one. Who else has a microphone over here? All right, let me give out two to start with. Matthew 5, verse 17 and 18, talking about the dependability. Bertie's got her hand right there. Somebody else maybe on this side. Go to the first book of the Bible. I want you to read Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Genesis 3, verse 1. Somebody over here, hold your hand up. Right there, Poncho Dale's got his hand up. Why don't we start with you, Bertie, talking about the indestructibility of the Bible. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of any pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Jesus said heaven and earth would have to pass away first. Now, is there an effort to abolish the Bible? I mean, he told us a minute ago about Diocletian, there's Voltaire, and many others have sought to do that. Well, who is the first to try to abolish the Word of God? Why don't you read that next verse for me, Dale? Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. 3, 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, ye shall, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? At the end of that sentence is something called a question mark. 
which usually follows what? A question. This is the first question in the Bible. The first question in the Bible is the serpent, who's really who? Questioning the Word of God. Trying to create doubt about God's Word. Is he still doing that today? Uh, Questioning the authenticity of the Word of God. It's under attack. So the devil tries to destroy God's Word, but as he's looked at history, he hasn't been very successful in doing that. So now he's changed his tactics somewhat. Instead of trying to extinguish the Bible, he's trying to discredit the Bible. And so we have the rise of the so-called higher criticism of Scripture, discrediting the miracles performed by Jesus and some of the other things, now trying to discredit the Bible, the, the authority and the accuracy of Scripture. You know, the Jews had a tradition that if all of the people in the world united in an attempt to destroy or alter the Bible, that they would incur such great guilt that God would destroy them before they were actually to do what they had hoped to do, change the word. Thus the Jews believed that the word of God was protected and guarded by God himself, that the accuracy of the word is indeed intact. You know, there's an amazing story in the Bible that uh, during the time of King Josiah, they were cleaning out the temple. And Hilkiah the priest found, it says he found a scroll and they brought it to the king and the king read it and he he wept and he tore his clothes. and, And what evidently he found was the original writing of Moses. Remember, Moses had taken the ordinances and the law and put them in a pocket outside the ark. Well, over the hundreds of years uh, from the wandering and the time of the judges and the early kings, it had somehow been lost, but yet it was preserved all that time. So here you are, hundreds of years after King David, and the original copy is found. God had somehow preserved it. Now, I think that's one reason that we can trust that God has protected the word But there are some other reasons I think it's been protected. You've heard, um, oh, I forget what they call that before where they say, uh, you tell someone a story and then they tell someone, they tell someone. As it goes around the circle, by the time it gets back, it's been altered. It's usually ridiculous and very different. And they say, how can the Bible be the same? It's been translated and passed on so many times. How can it be the same? Let me give you some verses I'd like to invite you to uh, take a look at here. That bear this out. Someone please read for me Deuteronomy 4, verse 2. Hold your hand up if you're willing. Somebody else, Proverbs 30, verse 6. And Pastor Ross, why don't you read that one right there? All right. You know that? Yep. Okay. Matter of fact, you could start. What an aside. Let me read it from your notes here. All right. Reading Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man will take away from the words of the prophecy of this book, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in the book. 